On today's episode, the new accelerator driving commercial fusion power, money. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.com TV today. Now I'll admit I'm a sucker for fusion energy and who wouldn't be? Unlimited energy, an inexhaustible source of fuel and little to no waste. Now scientists and engineers have been chasing it for 70 years and have been working on commercial applications for over 30. Now the trouble is fusion is 50 years away and it always has been. But is there anything that anyone can do to keep the finish line from receding toward the horizon the way it does with current fusion technologies? Well, I think we're about to find out. After decades of government-funded, university-driven fusion research, multiple private companies, well-financed, are cutting metal right now with the goal of building prototype power reactors. The difference is important because for decades, large fusion programs like the National Ignition Facility and the multinational ITER project, well, they've been focused on the first steps, namely understanding and controlling plasmas and validating theories around important factors like ignition and stability. Now that's all good, but it has two major disadvantages. It's slow and it's incredibly expensive. Now advancing the planet's understanding of atomic science is a good thing, but it's a substantially different thing from engineering a commercial power reactor. The first commercial fission reactors were built some 60 years ago with a far weaker understanding of the physics than exists today. And they were built on principles derived from military reactors of a decade earlier, which were producing heat and transmuted fissionable materials with an even weaker understanding of the underlying science. So why didn't they wait until they fully understood the physics? Because the military needs dictated that America and Russia not spend three or four decades trying to understand nuclear fission perfectly before attempting it. And it seems to me that that's where we've been with fusion for a long, long time. For years, there are only two approaches. Confine a plasma in a toroidal magnetic field in a high vacuum or implode a target pellet with extremely powerful laser beams. Now, both approaches had one thing in common. They require enormous amounts of apparatus and money. Then energy became important again with global warming and some private equity stepped in. Suddenly, with commercial investment, there are multiple alternative technologies under development that are truly unique. General Fusion is building a prototype that mechanically impacts a vessel full of liquid metal to create a converging spherical shock wave to create fusion. Commonwealth Fusion Systems uses the familiar tokamaks, but in a considerably scaled down form using new high temperature superconductors to cost effectively generate the staggering magnetic fields needed for containment. TAE Technologies are combining magnetic containment and particle accelerator methods. Tokamak Energy is using a spherical tokamak also with high temperature superconductors. And there are now 35 private companies working on commercial fusion. So when do we get there? Well, we still don't know, but there are reasons to believe that it won't take 50 years. And the main reason is that there are now multiple and different approaches to achieving commercially viable fusion power, and hedging bets, of course, is always a good idea. But I think the most important factor is that there are now private capital behind the effort, capital that needs to see a return on investment. The giant nationally funded research programs will generate a large amount of very useful research, but they can succeed in that effort without ever actually producing a commercially viable power reactor. For them, the journey is the finish line. For the smaller players, the goal is to become the apple or alphabet of renewable energy. Everyone wants fusion. Environmentalists, governments, and a small but growing pool of private investors. But the real accelerator here isn't about subatomic particles, it's cash. Well, that's it for today's episode of End of the Line, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering video series for the manufacturing professional, visit engineering.com TV to watch exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, not found here on our YouTube channel. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.